In today's episode, we are in West Africa for the first time, and we are in Ghana with a very special guest presenter. Yo, hello, great people, African traveler here, and today I have a host, Avala, who's the, you're the engineer? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a facility engineer. You're the facility engineer for the solar taxi. So, guys, these are, they offer very amazing uh, experience. As you know, I'm an EV enthusiast, and growing EVs in Africa is something that passionate to me and I'm going to show you guys who are doing it well in Africa and today I'm in Ghana so uh, Savala yeah, okay. Savala yeah, it's a very know. common name in my, language, in my country as well really? yeah wow. what, what, from the western what, Kenya what, what, what would it mean in your language? No, it's not in my language. My one of my in my country. Okay, one yes, of one of the one of the communities okay. there from Western okay. Kenya. Yes, that, that's interesting to know. So, Savala, what is solar taxi about? Okay, so uh, generally speaking, and as as simple as it's, uh, it's it puts it out, solar taxi. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but sometimes people get the name wrong. Solar taxi is that only taxis? No, not exactly. <laughs> I almost downloaded the Uber app for solar taxis. Like, exactly. is, it, uh, is it like Uber? Is, is like it like Uber? Then I went and yeah. read about it online and I got a different perspective. We are, we are one of many things. So, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, what, what, what we stand for is electric mobility, basically. Mm-hmm. So the name solar taxi is sort of metaphorical and it's try, it's trying to portray a story mm-hmm. of uh, transporting people on yeah. renewable energy. Transporting yes. people to renewable energy. Exactly. So the company is a solar taxi, but our vehicles are not necessarily taxis. We have mm-hmm. SUVs, we have sedans, we have crossovers, we have different kinds of you have different vehicles. kind of cars. Yes, we have motorcycles. motorcycles. So uh, electric motorcycles, electric scooters. So uh, that, that's basically. So how, how did how did the company start? Okay, so a uh, company like every other great, you know, uh, impact impactful company in the world yeah. today started with an idea yeah. yes our founder and our co-founder uh, traveled around the world a bit you know yeah. had some exposure with renewable energies electric vehicles and I'm, I'm sure other people had those ideas too but uh, implementing it, is a different thing exactly so that's actually the implementation of that dream mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they, they, they realized that in, in Ghana and in Africa especially uh, everything I mean all around the world but for us because uh, of how world trade is and how Africa doesn't s- seems to be on the losing end of world trade uh, fuel costs affect everything we do even agriculture very true because very food true. and produce have to be moved from where they are grown or to the market, to the market and yeah. that's transportation and you realize in Ghana that when uh, uh, food prices increase, the food prices are going up to almost immediately. Exactly. And you know, uh, transportation affects everything. So, um, I mean, but 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 the, the so other. So it started side, around in Kumasi around twenty. Yeah, around late twenty eighteen. So, late twenty eighteen. So started late Why Kumasi and not Accra? Well, so uh, th- 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 that was because of a, 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 a short background. Uh, so mm-hmm. Solar Taxi is the brainchild of you know our, our founder and co-founder. Where uh, are also the founders of Kumasi Hive, which is like a, a hub, like a technology innovation hub, hub. A center. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that, that's where Solar Taxi was born. Those ideas were, you know. You still have operations in Kumasi? Sorry? You still have operations in Kumasi? Yes, yes, yes. So actually, our head office, in a sense, is in Kumasi. So this, this is just our Accra our, <laughs> our our, office. Exactly. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. So 2018. And uh, right now, how many uh, uh, solar cars and uh, motorcycles do you have? Okay, so presently we have about 16 electric vehicles on the road. Okay. And we 16 have 16 electric vehicles, which, which, which um, different types, as you say? Okay, so we have uh, one compact mm-hmm. SUV. Yeah. We have 10, 10 crossovers. So they're like an SUV. They are not, they are not a sedan, they're not an SUV. Cross, it's almost an SUV, the so, cross, crossover. And then we have uh, two hatchbacks, two hatchbacks, and we have uh, four naval electric vehicles. Mm. So that that's that's our fleet size of electric vehicles. But we have one forty electric motorcycles. One forty. So one forty. How do you pro- what do they do most of the time? The motorcycle. Okay, so our motorcycles are usually uh, working on a, a lease to own model. Mm-hmm. Where we, we, so we, we it's, it's a whole value chain. We, we, we take up most of the value chain. The riders, we train and recruit riders, mm-hmm. help them become licensed, 
conduct safety trainings for them and then we lease the the rider and the motorcycle as a service to companies that need that for example junior oh. dhl so it's the 140 Max. motorcycles you yeah. guys own them yes we own them we and own lease them, them to, to to online companies exactly. or companies e-commerce businesses that are into delivery and all that yeah. and uh, it seems like the motorcycle business is growing very fast uh, considering the number of motorcycles that you guys have right now that's true so how how do you uh, do you assemble the metal motorcycle locally yeah. or you import them okay so our motorcycles are 100 percent fully assembled in ghana 100 percent assembled in ghana yes designed by us and assembled it most of our parts are procured yeah. from, i mean we procure them from abroad yeah but uh, the specifications are designed by engineers by engineers here, here. exactly wow Wow, amazing. What about the cars? Yes, uh, so for now we do not assemble electric vehicles here, mm-hmm. but it's in our future plan. Okay. And we actually have a rollout plan for our, our semi knockdown assembly plant. And uh, we've already started demonstration, so we took a, a car apart and put it together. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're on course. We, have, we are in the process of signing MOUs with some key manufacturers. Yes, and uh, because we are looking at, you know, um, one of the key things for us is affordable. Yeah. But, you know, electric vehicles have comparatively a higher initial cost. So we are looking at, you know, cars with a Chinese price, but yeah. a European, the quality. European <laughs> quality. And there are a lot of that, you know, being used in Europe, you know, manufacturing in China, but for the European market. For the European market, exactly. that's true. That's true. The other question, what are the biggest challenges you guys face? Well, <laughs> like like any uh, pioneering, you know, or emerging market business yeah. will face, we currently we, we are facing a number of challenges. One of them is that uh, uh, naturally we don't have a, a very very good cooperation from the government, and and even you'll be you'll be surprised to know that uh, our electric vehicles are considered luxury vehicles when. We are importing them at the port, so we pay extra <laughs> duty, duty on them. When our aim is to actually make them afford more affordable, you know. I think it's the same case in my country as well. Wow. Yeah, somebody with an electric car told me it's like, hey, when he went to the port authority, the other, uh, government uh, tax authority is like, they don't know what to charge it. It's like it's a premium. I tell so you. Instead <laughs> of uh, encouraging people to, you know, go this side That's to true. encourage reduce yeah. the. Uh, air pollution and stuff. That's very true, you know. Electric vehicles have a, a very huge social impact, environmental mm-hmm. impact, very huge one, you know. And uh, well, I think, I mean, all that's important, but when we speak to people, yeah. the feedback we get is that, you know, people are more interested in the fact that they're cheaper to run or to own. Yes, and uh, yeah. from our calculation, from the feedback we have from some of our clients, yeah. people are saving up to 70% of what you spend on food and, uh, and that's tremendous that's 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 that's, wow. that's great you yeah. know in the long term we may have as you say the initial cost may be slightly higher exactly but you'll save uh, in the long term huh? we have a, a riding academy we train oh. riders uh, we, we are trying to have a, a wider you know reach and uh, we are trying to make sure that it's more beneficial to the community wow yeah so we train riders we also train uh, young women in the community. I saw it's part of your goal, so gender equality. Exactly. So we have something called the Female Engineers Academy. So uh, the, currently we have the second cohort having an internship with us. So you notice that they're the ones in the um, reflector, in the high, vis- high visibility yeah. vests. Yes. Wow. They are, so those are engineers? Yeah, they are interns. They are interns. So you also teach your, your students how to pre- repair the car there? The, yes. So the, because comprehensively. Ah. Yes. Oh, that's everything. something very we thoughtful. Teach, eh? We teach design. Yeah. We teach battery architecture. Mm-hmm. We teach uh, routine maintenance. We teach corrective maintenance, preventive maintenance. Everything in the electric vehicle industry, engineering wow. space. Wow. Yes. We, are even, very... we are even going into software development. No. Yes, how to program uh, battery management systems. Yeah, and all that. Guys, that is very thoughtful because some of the uh, importers, uh, like in Kenya, some of the importers uh, in Kenya who have imported electric cars, the biggest challenge is where to repair the electric cars. So you guys have gone a notch a step ahead and uh, 
you know, it's like you're preparing for the future in a big way. I tell you. I like, <laughs> I like your ambition. So these are the taxis? Yes, so these are the neighborhood electric vehicles. Neighborhood electric vehicles. Designed by Solata. They are good for an enclave, like a university campus, you know, because of their range. They, they, and, they have a, and they have a solar panel yeah, on top. Yeah, solar panel on top. Exactly. So, so this, you don't need to charge, um, no, they still have a charger. They still have a charger, so mm. once you are charging, so they charge faster because whilst you're charging, it's charging through the solar panels as well. So it's, the battery is being charged at the two, two, yes, they are, from they are, two intervals. There are two in inlets, exactly. Two inlets at the same time. Exactly. Let me just show you guys what I mean. So you can see here, there's this charger, here, there's this charger, and there's also a solar panel here. So, so far, these are used for what? Uh, currently, these are used for company rounds, company operations. Um, yes. and, uh, we so mostly by staff? Mostly by staff to move around to carry out company operations. But uh, we are also signing some MOUs with um, uh, some key educational inst institutions, especially universities, yeah. where they can use this for, you know, um, campus uh, commuting, moving commuting. around campus. Yes. Wow. To, to reduce transportation costs. Nice.